Hey everybody, it's Matchbox Day. Don't go away. Hey gang, it is Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today it is a very fun special Matchbox Day. In one of my recent mail call Mondays, I showed you all the stuff I got. And I asked you guys to cast your votes on what to do first. And it was close between the Porsche and the uh, station wagon, but the station wagon went out. And so today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a Matchbox station wagon and we're going to convert it into the Wagon Queen family truckster. Let's get right to it. From the day I saw this ugly Matchbox car on eBay, I knew I had to have it and I knew it needed to be a Wagon Queen family truckster. So, that's what we're going to do to it. As you can see, everything's pretty much here. The car is really not in bad shape, other than it's just really ugly. So it's going to be perfect for the truckster. Working tailgate, ugly garish yellow interior, messy looking base, the Cougar Villager, made by Lesney Products in England, Matchbox. Yeah. Okay, well, we got three rivets. We're gonna have to get rid of them. It's time for the big bits. Okay, clearly these ones in the back are just a little bit smaller, but also they've got that little indent in them, which makes this work even better. Okay, short work of that one. And short work of this one. Then we can flip the car around. Now let's go get this sucker out of the front. All right, now that the uh, rivets are drilled out, we can go ahead and pop this car apart. I always like to have to kind of pop the car apart. I think that uh, it helps put it back together a little bit better. So I try not to over drill the rivets. Okay, so the base, you can see it's just got the straight axles and the super fast wheels. Here's that ugly, ugly yellow interior. So we can just lift that sucker right out of here. We're gonna have to do something with that. It's not gonna stay that way. Pretty sure the truckster didn't have yellow interior. Hey, look at that! No rivet in the glass! Well, I'll be skippy. And it's not in terrible shape. Okay, so we can take that out. We can work with that. And here you have it. The Oh, almost forgot. A little tailgate. Looks like it just is pinched in there into a little groove. So the base and the body kind of hold it in place. And I think it's plastic. It, it looks and feels very plasticky. All right, and here you have it. A soon-to-be family truckster. Well, the windshield's not perfect. It does have a giant bow in the front of it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that out or really how much of a, a problem it's going to be. I'll look at it. Maybe put a little heat on it with the blow dryer and see if I can at least reduce it a little bit. But, you know, I don't have another one of these, and so I don't want to break this glass. Okay, so let's get going here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this upper molding line, okay? It doesn't belong on the truckster, so we're going to file that off. We're also going to file off the gas cap. You can see it here down by my finger. Uh, in the uh, left rear quarter because we all know where the gas cap is on the family truckster and it sure ain't there. 
So we're going to get all this stuff filed off. Just using a little bit of a straight file here. And of course I'll, I'll work on it with some sandpapers and stuff and get that all nice and smooth. Okay, so I need to get the wheels out of the base. And they're just kind of crimped in. There's a, a chunk of metal on either side of them. And then they're kind of squished, you know, by these two chunks of metal being brought together. So I don't really want to cut that out. Um, I see a lot of guys uh, take like a, a grinding disc or something like that and cut that down and then just glue back in. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try and get them out by prying that apart a little bit. And then I'm, when I put it back together, I'm going to see if I can actually kind of crimp it back together. So I'm just going to try and get these out of here the best I can. I've got a little tiny flat bladed screwdriver here and I've just got it in the gap between them. And I'm just kind of trying to pry that open enough that I can get the wheels out. Okay, the wheels are out, so the base is stripped, the body is stripped, and I think we can go ahead and get rid of this already ugly green paint. Now listen, uh, just a heads up, this is a pretty in-depth uh, custom. This video is going to be a little bit longer, so I hope you'll forgive the, uh, the length of this, but I really don't want to leave out any of the fun stuff. So just preparing you ahead of time. Okay, so here I am. I've got the gel stripper start on the inside and just line it with a brush going over the entire car. And I'm going to let it dissolve away as much of the paint as possible. And I'll, of course, use my brush and try and help nudge it off as well. Okay, you can see we're at that point where a lot of the paint is starting to let go. So we can use the brush just to, to kind of slurp it off the car. And uh, it's always a good idea to just keep adding some more of the stripper because you might take off a layer or two and there might still be some on, uh, you know, the car underneath that hasn't really been impacted by the stripper. So, you know, don't be afraid to put more stripper on as you need it. Okay, so we're starting to get there. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, take this to the sink and wash it off and brush it down and see what we have. Okay, we are back from the sink. The paint for the most part came off. Now we're going to break out the brass bristle brush and we're going to give this car once over. Try and remove any flakes that we didn't get in the uh, paint stripping process. And it also kind of homogenizes everything. So it's, it's a, a good little step right here. Okay, so all in all, I think we did great, but there are still little specks of the green paint on here. And so we're gonna break out the dental picks and get in the little grooves and nooks and crannies and get rid of those last little pieces that uh, are refusing to give up the ghost. Okay, so I went into my computer and using Illustrator and a photo of the family truckster, I replicated and then scaled wood paneling. This is just a laser print uh, of the paneling and it's just held on with a little scotch tape so I can test fit everything and see how it's going to fit out and see if I'm happy with it. And if I am, I can turn this into decals. 
uh, to put on the car after the paint job. Okay, a little bit of sanding, and, and I'm just about there. I've gotten rid of that trim, and uh, the gas tank is gone, and the car is starting to take shape, and uh, we'll be ready for paint here pretty quickly. I have a pretty amazing wife. In my fire truck build that you may or may not have seen yet, I don't know if I've posted it yet or not, uh, she gave me some uh, gemstones to use for a blue light for the fire truck. And for this model, she's given me this little luggage cart because I need a ton of luggage to put on top of the car. And look at what she brought me. How perfect. Okay, I'm gonna end up fighting with this for quite some time to get all this apart without destroying it. Um, but I need to get it apart so I can make sure that it's gonna fit on the roof well. And also I want to paint it because uh, it's not very good looking. So we're gonna give it a, a better paint job. Like a glove. I think that's just about right. Unless, of course, I wanted to leave a piece out so I could put an Ed knob there. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to go with luggage. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. I don't do a lot of sanding and stuff on my restorations and customs. Simply because at this scale, I think... A lot of that work goes by the wayside. I think you don't see a lot of that. But on this particular car, I've had to do a lot of stuff to this body. And I think it would be a huge mistake not to put a little more effort into that. So this car has gotten a nice layer of Tamiya Fine Primer. And then a little bit of a sanding to uh, deal with some of the areas that I've noticed that, that aren't looking the way I want them to. Okay, with the body finished up and primed and ready to go, I've washed it and letting it dry. Now I'm back in my paint booth. Now, I'm also trying to do my paint jobs more like a, an automotive paint booth would. And here you see I'm just misting down the inside of my paint booth. Um, in a lot of the automotive spray booths, they, they will wet down the floor and stuff like that to keep dust down. And so I've taken to starting to do that. So I, spray, I put some uh, paper towels down to hold some of the moisture. I mist everything with uh, some fresh water to keep uh, dust and bully boogers under control. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead and get to painting. Now, I don't know how accurate this paint is going to be. Every photo on the internet shows it to be different. I did the best thing that I think would work. And this is a combination of a pearl lime, some transparent dark green, some winter green, and a touch of white, and then thin down. And so that's the color I'm going with. It's ugly, it's kind of pearlescent, and I think it's gonna be perfect. Um, some may say it's not the right hue or whatever. You know, I, I'm not gonna worry about it, okay? Okay, so right about here, a lot of you might be asking, well, why are you painting the base? The base wasn't painted in the, uh, the car you bought. You know, why aren't you just polishing that up? And I'll tell you why. Because of the front grille. The front grille on the family truckster is very readily identifiable. And so I had to take the uh, mercury grille and fill it in with uh, uh, putty, and sand it down and get it to be this smooth, horrible, ugly grill. And then I could paint it the body color, which is what it's supposed to be. 
So I just decided the easiest way to go about that is to paint the entire base body color and then I can add in the silver for the, the trim later. Okay, here I am hitting up the body now and like always, tack coat, medium coats, wet coats, okay? By now you should be used to me hear, hearing me say that, uh, but that's just the way we go at it, okay? Tack coat, medium coats, wet coats. And you see that this is a really ugly color, so it's going to be good. Whether it's exactly right or not, who knows. I guess it depends on uh, what resource photo you're using. As to the tailgate, because it was indeed plastic, I was concerned about how the paint would stick. So prior to putting on any primer or anything like that, I actually kind of painted it with an acrylic paint just to kind of seal up that plastic because I've had experiences with softer plastics where primer really just won't dry on them. So I sealed it up with acrylic paint so that when I got to this step, the tailgate would be able to take the paint. Okay, so normally after paint, I'd let this body dry and then I would apply the urethane clear coat, but I'm gonna have a ton of decals I have to uh, seal underneath the clear coat. So here are the decals I made. I uh, worked them all out on the computer using Adobe Illustrator and I printed them out on a, uh, I have a laser printer, not an inkjet printer, so I've got uh, water slide decal paper for laser printers. It's white based, so the bad part is I have to cut out right up against every single one of these. Made it a little bit difficult, but it is what it is. Anyhow, so I'm cutting out all the decals, getting them all applied, and then after all the decals are done, then we can go ahead and seal it all up with some nice urethane, urethane clear coat. Okay, so after dipping the decal in the water and letting that sit for a while, I'll brush on a little water to where the decal is going to go, and then I'll slide the decal off the backing paper into its position. If I can, I will use a thumb or finger to help position it, and for fine movements, a little toothpick works wonders right here. Once I have it in place, I'm going to use a little bit of Walther's decal solvent and this will help this decal set down really hard and better yet conform to any body lines or curves or anything like that. So all I do is just kind of brush them on and just let it dry naturally. A word to the wise, once you put the Walther's on there, don't touch the decal again. It will just become a mess, okay? Because it gets so soft from that solvent. So do not touch. Even if it starts to look a little wrinkly and stuff, that's natural. As it dries, it will flatten out. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Again, I've dipped the decal and it's just sitting off to the side. Now I put a little water on the door. I'll go ahead and start the decal by sliding it halfway off the paper. And then I'm going to just try and slide it off onto the door here. And here it's going to be helpful to have a little pair of tweezers. So I'll hold the decal down and pull that paper out. Okay, right now I just want it to be on the car and then I'll position it. Yeah, you have to hand it. To the movie guys who made this car because they sure did make it ugly.
Okay, as I'm about ready to go to the clear coat process, I decided I wanted to went, go ahead and put in the silver. And so uh, for the silver on this one, I'm just using Tamiya silver and a brush, and I'm painting in around the headlights and the bumpers on this uh, uh, base. And then I'll let that dry, and then we can take everything over to clear coat. Okay, so now that the silver is nice and dry, I can bust out some Tamiya white, do the headlights, and then I'm going to finish up the front end of the car by using some Tamiya Clear Orange to do the marker lights. Okay, so the clear coat I use is from the Redline Shops. It is their urethane clear coat. It's essentially their Spectra Flame paint without any color in it. And so you take it and you mix it up with some drops of hardener, and it will give you a really beautiful, glossy, durable, hard finish on your cars. I love the stuff, okay? So anyhow, I'm mixing it up really well. I've uh, already added in the hardener, and I'm just going to make sure it's thoroughly mixed load it up in the airbrush, and then I will clear coat the entire car, base, and tailgate. Okay, so every part of this is going to get the same treatment. It's going to get a tack coat, medium coat, wet coats, okay? Nothing has changed. It doesn't matter that it's the base or the tailgate or the body. Everything gets the same treatment. Okay, so for the luggage stack for the roof, I went ahead and painted it with just some Vallejo uh, brown paint, a nice flat color, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, here I'm putting in a, a few of the details like handles and, and latches and things like that. And then uh, I'll go ahead and coat it with some varnish, let it dry, and then I'm going to give it some detail and some life by using a pin wash on it to... Uh, to give it some uh, realism. And uh, it should make it look really, really nice up on the roof of the car. Ah, my good friend Gauzy. Okay, I've looked at the windshield. I did try to warm it up and bend it back a little bit, but really anything too severe, I was worried I was gonna break it. So uh, we're not really gonna screw with that. I've, I've test fitted it back in the car to see how it looks. It looks as good as it can. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, wipe it down and take it for a swim in Gauzy. And uh, we'll let that dry off to the side until we're ready for it. Okay, the shiny finish on the luggage that my wife gave me just didn't fit in. So I went ahead and painted the luggage with some uh, Vallejo brown paint just to give it a, a flatter, more realistic look. And here I'm going to use a tip from Model Building and I'm going to use a pin wash to give the uh, luggage a little bit of detail and realism. Music 
To apply the wash, you just take the brush and touch it to one of the seams or one of the details, and capillary action will pull it throughout the detail or the seam that you're doing. Once you're done applying the pin wash, just let it dry for a little bit. I've put this over an acrylic, and this is actually an enamel. So I can use a cotton swab and a little enamel thinner after it's dry to wipe away any excess or wipe away any from spots I don't want it without destroying the paint underneath it. Okay, so we all know that the truckster loses its hubcaps in St. Louis. So I wanted to give the tires and wheels a real worn and weathered look and of course no hubcaps. So to start I wanted to paint the tires with a, a little bit of Tamiya rubber. Um, the, you know tires aren't black. Tires are more like a, a grayish brown and so this will give the tires a, a much more realistic look and a, a much more worn look. Then I'll come back with a little bit of Tamiya flat black and paint the wheels to kind of intimate that the hubcaps were stolen in St. Louis. Okay, so when I took the car apart, I tried not to cut open the crimp that held the axles in. I actually just got a small screwdriver in there and kind of pried it open until I could get the wheels out, thinking maybe, maybe I could crimp that back together. And I was able to get it back together a little bit, but it wasn't really as good as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the axles down besides the little crimp that I got in there using a little bit of 3-Minute Epoxy and a couple drops of Cyanoacrylate. The epoxy will hold longer and stronger, but the Cyanoacrylate will give me the instant hold that I also want. I just mix up equal parts of the epoxy and the hardener, stir it nice and thorough, and remember you only have about three minutes of open time, and then I'll go ahead and apply it with a toothpick. After I've got the epoxy in, I'll make sure everything is lined up the way I want it, and then I'll come back and put just a drop of thick cyanoacrylate glue on the axles just to kind of lock everything together. This car's taken me a while, but it's finally time to put it back together. I'll go ahead and start by dropping in the gauzy dipped windshield. And next up will be the interior. It was an ugly yellow, and I took some, to me, a flat brown and made it an ugly brown. Drop that in. Notice I painted the little tab on the back of it because it does show out by the bumper. Here, I forgot to put the tailgate in, which would have really sucked, so I took the interior back out and dropping the tailgate in. Now the interior goes in. And next up is the base. So if you remember when I drove this apart, I mentioned that the back had two small rivets and the front had one larger one. So for the front, I'm actually going to use the same screw that I use on most of my restorations, which is a 256. For the back, I'm going to use a 172. Go ahead and screw these suckers in, and this car is almost done. Okay. 
so it looks like we can just go ahead and put the luggage on the roof and then we can go ahead and call it a day. And here for your viewing pleasure is the Wagon Queen Family Truckster. You may think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. Okay guys, there you have it, the Wagon Queen Family Truckster. I think it came out fantastic. I love it. From that ugly, ugly station wagon and the vision I got, the second I saw it, I said, Family Truckster. Now, a perfectionist could probably nitpick this to death and say maybe the paint's too shiny or it's the wrong color or maybe, you know, I should have found some way to put the extra headlights in or this or that or the next thing. I could have put an end on the roof. There's a, a million different things you could do here, but within what I felt comfortable with, I think it came out amazing. It absolutely, is there any doubt what this thing is? I don't think so. I mean, I you see this. And everybody knows this is the Wagon Queen family truckster. All right, if you liked this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Click the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Make any questions or comments down below. I really do read them all, and it's actually one of the joys of my day is to see the comments every morning. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, have an amazing, super, califragilistic, awesome, neato day, and be good. So cool.